What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with quadratic relations. So we're told that this table here below represents a quadratic relation. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And what we have to do is we have to find the actual quadratic, the a, b, and c values. So how do we do that if we are given a table like this? So notice that these are points, right? So the point, for example, one and two, is on that quadratic, right? An x value of one, a y value of two. And then we have a point two, a negative three, three, negative 14, four, negative 31, et cetera. Now, in this case, notice that we are solving for three values, a, b, and c. And so what we're gonna need is three different equations. And then we can do substitution or elimination on those three equations. So going back to linear systems, in this case, solving for three variables. And the way we could create those three equations is we can plug in these coordinates for x and y. So for example, if we take the coordinate one and two, what's the equation we could, uh, we could create? So we would plug in two for y, so we'd have two equals a one squared plus b times one plus c, right? Plugged in two for the y and then one for all the x values. And what do we end up getting here if we simplify all this? Well, one to the power two is just one times a is just a, b times one is just b plus c. So we got two equals a plus b plus c. So that's gonna be one of the equations right there. Then we could take the next point. So two, negative three, uh, plug in negative three for the y value, and then we'd plug in two for the x values. Like that, two to the power two is four times a, so that would give us four a plus two b plus c like that. So that right there is another equation. So we got equation one, we got equation two, like that. And then you could pick one of these points because we only need three equations since we're only solving for three unknowns. So I'm gonna pick this one over here, this point. So we plug in negative 14 for y, then we'd have, uh, we'd plug in three for all the x values. Uh, like that, so we'd have negative 14 equals three to the power two is nine times a, that gives us nine a plus three b plus c. And so now what we have, notice, we got three equations and three unknowns, and from here we could just do substitution or elimination. So what are we gonna do from here? Different things you could do, you could isolate for some variables and then plug them into other variables. That's actually what I'm gonna do. And because these C's here, they're all by themselves, I feel like that's the easiest one to work with. So you could do elimination. So for example, you could subtract this equation from this one, the C's would cancel out and then maybe subtract this equation from this one, the C's would cancel out again. Then you'd have two equations in terms of A and B. What I'm gonna do is substitution. So what I'll do is I'll isolate for this C value here. So if we do that, we'd bring the A over, the B over. So we'd have two minus A minus B is equal to C, right? That's still the first equation that we're working with. And then I'm gonna plug in this expression, right? The C is isolated. I'm gonna plug in this expression for this C and that C. And then what's gonna happen, so when we do that for this equation, we'll have negative three equals four a plus two b. Just be careful with your algebra here and putting everything correctly. So we're plugging in this for this c value. So we have plus two minus a minus b, like that, right? So for this c value, we plugged in that expression over here. And then what we could do is we could simplify everything. So we could bring the two over, negative three minus two would give us negative five. Then we'll have four a minus a, which would give us three a. And then we'll have two b minus b, which would just give us b. Okay, so now let's keep track of these over here. We're coming up with new equations. But notice that this equation now, it's only in terms of a and b. We got rid of that c 
variable. So now we have two variables to solve for. But if we have two variables to solve for, we need two equations. So the second equation is going to come from that third equation after we plug in that C. So we'd have negative 14 equals 9A plus 3B plus that C value. It's already by itself, so we could just plug in that for the C value. If there was like, a, let's say, plus 3C over here, then we would have to put a 3 in front of that, right? But because the C is by itself, it's like a 1C, and so we're just multiplying this by 1, which is just that itself, right? And then from here, uh, simplifying everything, bring the 2 over. Negative 14 minus 2 would give us negative 16. Then we'll have 9A minus A. So this two went away. 9a minus a would give us 8a. And then we'll have 3b minus b would give us 2b, like that. And now we have a second equation with only a and b. So we got two equations now, two unknowns. Another thing I want to mention, notice here, we can actually simplify this because notice we could divide everything by two. I like to look out for those kinds of opportunities. Notice here we couldn't do that, right? We couldn't divide everything by something just because the C was actually by itself. And then even here, if we had like an even number in front of the C, this is not an even number, so we'd be dealing with a fraction. So I like to divide everything if I know I'm not going to be dealing with fractions after. So notice we could divide everything by 2 over here. You don't necessarily have to. You could just go into straight... Uh, substitution or elimination with those two equations, you're going to get the same thing. But if you could simplify, if you could divide everything, remember you got to divide everything by that value. But if you could divide everything and you don't end up with any fractions, then why not? Right? So now we got this equation. So we got negative 8 equals 4a plus b. And now we got these two equations that we can work with. And we could just solve for the A and the, um, the B value. Notice that the B is actually already uh, isolated in both. So we could just do elimination at this point. We just subtract these two to get rid of those B values. Another thing you could do, you could isolate for this B value, bring the 3A over, and then plug in that expression here. And then just solve for A. Whichever way you do it, just make sure you're getting the same values that I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, subtract this from that. So the Bs are going to cancel out. So we're going to subtract them. B minus B is just 0B, so that goes away. Uh, we'll have negative 5 minus negative 8, right? Negative 5 minus negative 8, which is like negative 5 plus 8 which would give us positive 3, so this here would be positive 3. Then we'll have 3a minus 4a, which would give us negative 1a, like that. And then b minus b, as we mentioned, it's just 0b. You don't got to write that. And then from here, so we got negative a is equal to 3. Just divide both sides by negative 1. And so a would equal negative 3. So we got one of the values. So we got a equals negative 3. Um, and then we could take this negative 3, we could plug it into either here or here to get the b value. Doesn't matter which one. It's going to be the same. Let's plug it into the first one. So we'll have negative 5 equals 3 times negative 3 plus b. Negative 5 equals negative 9 plus b. So we'll have b equaling negative 9. Bring it over. Negative 5 plus 9 would give us 4. So the b value is 4, like that. And then we still have to solve for the C value. You could take those and plug it into either of these three. You're going to get the same C value. Here it's already isolated, so let's actually just plug it in here, right? The C value is already isolated. So by plugging that A and B here, we'll have 2 minus the A value of negative 3, put in brackets, minus 4. That's going to be C, so we'll have 2 plus 3 minus 4 equals c, so we'll have 5 minus 4 is equal to c, so we'll have 1 is equal to c. So the c value is 1. We solve for all three unknowns. So the quadratic relation that that initial table was dealing with was negative 3x squared plus 4x 
plus one. If you want to do a quick check on this, if this is like a test question, you could take those values in the table. So for example, you could take the X values, you could plug them in to these X values and you should get the corresponding Y value that was in the table for that respective X value. Right, so I kind of forget actually, to be honest, what, um, what the points were. Actually, I think it was like, the table's not here, we got like one and two. Uh, we'd have two and negative three, and then we had three and negative 14. And then we had four and something, I think it was maybe four and negative 31. I forget, but you could take these points, plug in one for the X values, you should get a Y value of two. Plug in two, for the x values, you should get a y value of negative three. Plug in three for the x values, you should get a y value of negative 14. Right, so if you have time, that's a nice way to check your answer.